Yeah, I gotta tell you, that might be my least favorite Roberto one in a while. I, I, I don't I don't I don't like that one. I don't. Hour two. Good to have you. Oh. oh. Um let's cue up the Brad Holmes stuff. We'll get to Evan Jenkins Harbaugh conspiracy theory at four. There's been a lot of reports about Harbaugh, so don't get all butthurt. Oh, they're bringing it up again. Guys, I don't care. I don't care if he stays or goes. <laughs> okay. He could launch himself into space. I don't care. Your listener voice is hilarious. Because it's it's like, get some new material. You morons. Oh, Sparty, like Sparty what? You act like he runs Tuck off the field every year. He's two and one against him. Like, dude, Harbaugh's a good coach. And if Harbaugh leaves, you'll get another good coach. Like, what are we doing here? My program can't even pull their head out of their ass. You think I'm worried about you guys? Now, David, we have some Brad Holmes for you. Because he spoke, and he said a couple interesting things, but I thought one was about maybe foreshadowing where they're going in this NFL draft, and I want to know how far you're willing to take it, and I'll explain. But do we have the audio first? Let's play this. This was Brad Holmes yesterday. Now, it's interesting what he says here, because I think what happens in radio land and in fan land, you go, we got five at a top 82 picks. Ah, she was all five on defense. Let's just fix that. And I think that's a mistake. And I'll explain it. My rationale is this. Don't sleep on continuing to insulate your offense. And Rico and I talked before the show. When you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, oh, their defense is good but it's their offense that carries the day, right? Um, the Niners, when they're right, and I know with Brock Purdy it's going to look different, but their offense is a freight train. And Debo's healthy, Ayuk, Kittle, multiple running backs, great O-line. When you look at teams, hell, look in the NFC, the Eagles. That defense is good, but it's the offense that carries it. Buffalo. Buffalo's a gr- another great example, absolutely. Um, Bengals, same deal. So, I wanted to know as Lions fans, right? Dust is settled. We know you got five of the top 82 picks and cap space. What if I said to you, like, I wouldn't be mad if they took an offensive player at six or if they took one at 18. I'm going to use a majority of my assets on defense, but I still want to further insulate Jared Goff. Like, if I'm sitting at 18 and Quinton Johnson from TCU is there, I'm taking him. And I got a big body you know, perimeter guy in, in Quinton. I got J-Mo to burner on the other side. I'm moving ASB all over the place. I'm trying to build something. Well, the funny thing is they, they kind of did that last year with uh, taking Jamison. Yes. Moving up. They took a bunch of defensive players who all ended up playing for them. Yep. But somewhere in, in that first round, they moved in there and said, you know what, we'll take Jamison as well. We'll sit him for over half the year. We'll get him ready. What if they went Dallas plan? What if at 18, and work with me, what if at 18 they took the best guard in the draft? And you go, but our offensive line's already good. Yeah, so? Dallas every year, Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Lyle Collin. What if they took another O-lineman? What if they took one at 18 because they felt the value was unbelievable and they'd have an all-pro guard to add to the mix for cheap? See, I, I'm just putting scenarios out. I want to know. I think people have already lulled themselves into thinking it's going to go defense, defense. You know, you brought up B. John Robinson. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't take a running back in the first round. I wouldn't. It would bolster your offense. But I'm. that's what I was just about to say. Because I, some listeners might. I don't know if you're going to pay Jamal to come back. I don't know what Jamal's going to ask for. I'm not, hey, let me help you. I'm not. But he's now the Lions record holder for touchdown. I don't care. And he won over every Lions fan at the end of that game. Once again, don't care. I don't have feelings. I don't. You don't. This is about roster allocation and money. Because in the end, yeah, you want to go out and use those draft picks on defense. But, yeah, when you think about it, offense is what sells in the NFL. I know the cliche is defense wins championships. Defense builds consistency. I'm going to want to change that. 
if you look at the Ravens, the Ravens constantly have really good defenses, and they're consistent. They're in the playoffs. They don't win. Wish they had a quarterback. Look at the Steelers. Defense. They're consistent. Yeah. They don't win the championship. But then you look at the teams that have that prolific offense. You look at Stafford last year with the Rams and everything that. The Rams' defense should have been the Super Bowl MVP. But it was the offense that got all the love. It was the, It's the offense that sells in the NFL. And once again, no one talks about the Kansas City defense. It's all about, did you see that throw Mahomes made? Right. Nobody talks about the Bengal defense. Nobody talks about the Buccaneer defense. It, hey, Brady did this. Another great comeback. I'm just making a point to you. I have said, and I'm already preparing you for it, My, if, I'm, if I am running this team, that 18th pick I'd be shopping around the league for a high-level veteran. Give an example. Like the Saints are in salary cap hell. Offer pick 18 for Lattimore. Play him a corner. I'd do that in a heartbeat. You know, maybe there's a wide receiver out there you think completes your offense, unlocks another dimension. Maybe T. Higgins is available because since Cincinnati probably can't pay him. Like D-Hop. No, thank you. <laughs> and I have reasons for that that we'll get into later. The point is, guys, I'm open-minded about this to where I'm not going to yell and scream and be upset. There's really very little they could do that would upset me. Now, yes, I'd like to see, let's say, three of the first five picks go defense. Yes, and maybe their big free agent acquisition is defense. Well, that's four starters. Four. You, you have to continue, and this is not a shot at Jared Goff. He's your quarterback. I've been, how long have we been saying that? Mm -hmm. He's your guy. Keep investing in your guy. Yeah, that's really what happened to San Francisco. If you keep putting pieces around, even a marginal quarterback will be yep. a winner. And you'll laugh. You do need a running back. Because you do. Yeah, once again, look at how many backs that the Niners have gone through. Right. Seems like they lose five in the preseason every year. I wouldn't take him I wouldn't take a back in the first round. But if with a second or third round selection they took a running back, I, I would have no issue. Oh, but Jamal J fine, Jamal can be your short yardage, fourth quarter hammer, goal line guy, fine. But there's a hell of a lot of football that's got to be played around those situations. And DeAndre Swift, God love him, can't be trusted. Yeah, you need a back. I wouldn't be mad they took one. Can I give you some numbers here? Sure. We're talking about defense versus offense. Um, so internally, the defense got better the last half of the year. Weeks 10 through 7, 17, they were fourth overall in DVOA defensively. Yeah. 22nd in pass defense, 23rd in run defense. Yep. Weeks 10 through 17, they had 25 sacks, 6 interceptions versus 11 and two the weeks before that. D David, if they took at pick six, they took Tyree Wilson, the edge pass rusher from Texas Tech, and at 18, they took a corner. I'm not yelling and screaming. I'm simply leaving open the possibility. I want them to take a few offensive players in this draft. Well, I want to continue to build this offense, too. And that's where I'm leaning because of these numbers. I'm not saying do nothing. Because, no. of course, in the draft, you will get some defensive <laughs> David, players. David, but... think, about, think about if I took Tyree Wilson mm -hmm. and I take a corner at 18. Cam Smith, uh, Keeley Ringo, uh, Gonzalez, the kid from Oregon. I've just added two starters. Yeah. Then my big free agent acquisition is defense, too. Well, that's three. Don't be mad if in the second round they take an O-lineman. Like, I, I really think their offense can go from very good to outright devastating with one or two more players. See, and it's not the old lineman. That, I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and I would do the strategy of the Steelers, <clears throat> where they take a running, a receiver, second, third round, someone you like that yeah. you know, you know what, I could place them in here and we could do something. And it has to be specific. And what Correct. I mean by that is the Steelers are outstanding at taking specific types of receivers. Look, when they have a Deontay Johnson, they took George Pickens. That was a thoughtful, forceful selection, a big physical red zone target to replace the big physical guy they took but hated in Chase Claypool. Like, the Lions need that big physical wide receiver. See, I think you could find that, that, you could find that wide receiver anywhere. Ooh. Man, wide receivers, there'll be somebody that'll get cut that you could almost find, like – do on the DJ Chark plan where, you know, we'll sign you for a year, we'll see what happens, and we'll just keep going. Let me tell you something. The one that I would go with, Mike, is maybe at either pick 49 or pick 60 is a running back. Yes. Because I don't know what Swift's future is. 
I don't know. I'm what not Jamal's, signing him. I'm not what, signing him. I don't know him. what Jamal's future is going to be, and it's one that, if you're a Big Ten fan, you've seen many, many times. I'd go to Minnesota. I'd go get Mo Ibrahim. I'd bring him here. The man just he falls forward. It's positive yards. He does not get tackled for loss. You you can help in, in, in eating up the clock. You can it'll help you with your play action. It, that's the type of running back that I would bring in here if I were the Lions. All right, we're do, what are we doing? We're doing a name game? Is that what you want? No, I'm just saying. I, I look at him, and I'm like, <clears throat> that's a running back that will be around in the second round. Bijan, somebody's going to take Bijan. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I, I think or if, you know what? You may even be able to get Ibrahim probably in the third or fourth round because <clears throat> unless he tears up the senior bowl, he probably is going to be one of those people that, eh, you, but he's good. He's the guy you can add to this roster. You know what? I'm going to avoid saying a bunch of names that people don't know and just tell you we're going to get to the phones in a moment. Okay. There's no point in me even saying right. names. Sorry. Like, <laughs> Sorry. I got a little geeky. No, no. Your I enjoy it. But, like, if, if I'm like, oh, you listen, you really consider Sean Tucker at pick 60. No one knows who the hell that is. Damn, but they're all Googling them now. Okay. <laughs> That's your assignment, folks. Find out no. about Ibrahim. Wow. Well. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Rico, tell him about it.